Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the new 10th edition faction rules for Warhammer 40,000. Here we go then, more rules now revealed for the new 10th edition of Warhammer 40,000. And I've got to say, what a great chapter they chose for the image at the beginning of the article, the Imperial Fists leading the way there. So in this video, we're going to have a look through all the information in the article, and you'll see some army rules for the Adeptus Astartes, some detachment rules for the Tyranids, and you'll find out a bit more about stratagems and enhancements. All this is going to add to the information we got last week about army building. So once we've put together our army, we've chosen our faction, then we have to look at the detachment rules. These detachment rules are going to determine how our army performs, and it's going to include things like special rules and unique traits, as well as the unique stratagems and enhancements. The article today tells us that the index cards released when the new edition comes out will each come with one detachment representing a common fighting style for the particular faction. And then we're going to get more as new codexes arrive and they expand the armies. That's interesting then, we're definitely going to see more rules creeping in. But they do say there is one golden rule that they're sticking to, and that is that every detachment must fit on to a single double page spread. I'm pretty happy that this double page spread hasn't grown anymore since it went from a single page to a single double page. But so that's really good. This is going to be everything we need now on a single double page spread. And then we won't have to keep going back and forth to our books as we'll have all our army rules, stratagems, everything we need in one place. And then, of course, we'll have our data sheets, which are going to be available to download for free or purchase as affordable cards. As we talked about in a previous video, every faction will get an army ability. And now that's completely separate to the detachment, and so the detachment doesn't influence that army rule. And you can see the example here is for the Adeptus Astartes, called Oath of Moment. And in this example, it tells us that if your army faction is Adeptus Astartes, so it doesn't matter which chapter you go with, you're going to get this army rule. At the start of your command phase, select one unit from your opponent's army. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model from your army with this ability makes an attack that targets that enemy unit, you can re-roll the hit roll and you can re-roll the wound roll. So that's really nice. I like this army rule straight away, especially for the Imperial Fists. I think it's going to play in really nicely to them. But any Space Marine chapter, I think, is going to benefit when you want to target an enemy. Maybe they're on an objective or you just want to take out one of their bigger units. You can just focus your fire and take them down with a load of units from your army if they're in range and can get the shot in. There's one sentence in this article that really is quite big. It says that re-rolls are significantly less common in the new edition. So this army rule oath at the moment is really going to come in handy. That's interesting. I wonder if they're going to do something similar again to Age of Sigmar, where you're not getting as many re-rolls. And that I really like. Not having that option to waste your command points on re-rolls is really good, because the temptation's too strong, I think, sometimes. And I know when I play 40k, there's times when I shouldn't be wasting a command point on a re-roll. I should be saving it for a stratagem, but I still use it anyway. OK, let's have a look at detachments in more detail. And the example they gave us in the article today is for the Tyranids. It's for the Tyranids invasion fleet, and it's a detachment rule called Hyper Adaptations. It tells us that at the start of the first battle round, select one of the following Hyper Adaptations to be active for Tyranids units from your army until the end of the battle. So you can only choose one per battle, but the idea is you pick the one that's best suited to use against a particular enemy. So once you find out who you're fighting, then you can choose your hyper adaptation option. Let's have a look at them. So first up, we've got Swarming Instincts, and it says that each time a Tyranids model with this hyper adaptation makes an attack that targets an enemy infantry or swarm unit, that attack has the Sustained Hits 1 ability. That sounds pretty cool, but what does sustained hits mean? Basically, if you score a critical hit, which will be an unmodified six on your hit roll, you'll get one extra hit on the enemy. The second option is called hyper aggression, and each time a Tyranids model with this hyper adaptation makes an attack that targets an enemy monster or vehicle unit, that attack has the lethal hits ability. This is brilliant, we're getting another weapon special ability now, and basically lethal hits means you'll automatically wound on a critical hit. So if you get an unmodified roll of six on your hit roll, that's going to automatically wound the enemy. 
And finally, there's Hive Predators, and each time a Tyranids model with this hyper adaptation makes an attack that targets an enemy character unit, if a critical hit is scored, that attack has the precision ability. It doesn't tell us what that is in the article, and I can't find it, I've looked back through the other ones, so if you know what the precision ability is, if I've missed it somewhere, please let us know in the comments, that'd be awesome. But I'm wondering if maybe this will add, like, minus one AP, something like that. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, if I've missed it, please let me know down below, that'd be great. I think this is a great insight into the Tyranids though. We got a nice look at three different options on how to form your army when depending on who you're going to go up against. Uh, obviously, if you're going up against a vehicle or monster heavy army, you're going to choose hyper aggression. If you're going up against something like Astra Militarum, there's a good chance you're going to go with swarming instincts. And then a character heavy army, I guess hive predators. That's all we're getting for the detachment rule information in this article, and they do say just beneath that section that next month there'll be more information about the Tyranids army ability. So if you're interested in that, you've got a little bit longer to wait, but I expect we're going to get, what, two or three articles at least each week of other information, so still loads to come. And we're certainly not done with this video yet, as we've still got to take a look at stratagems and enhancements, and now these are going to be part of your detachment. It's great that in the article today, they highlight that we won't have loads of different stratagems to go through now, where previously there would be dozens. Now in the new 10th edition, there's going to be no more than six stratagems in each detachment. On top of the six stratagems you'll get in your detachment, there's also going to be universal core stratagems, and there's going to be 12 of those. There's still going to be quite a lot. Sounds like that's a good amount to be getting on with. But I think once everyone is going to learn those 12 core stratagems, no matter which army you play, then you've only got to learn another six, potentially, for your detachment. And so that's that's better. I think that's going to really balance things out as far as knowing your enemy is concerned. Because you're going to know the same 12 core stratagems that they can use. And then if you want to go a step further, you could learn the six that they have in their detachment. And you can have a really good idea of what they could do on the battlefield. Let's have a look at a stratagem then, and the example we've got here is the Armour of Contempt. This is a battle tactic stratagem for Gladius Task Force, and the Gladius Task Force is going to be the first Space Marine detachment that we'll get when the rules are released. It's really nice to see the layout is similar to the one we saw the other day when we did the other video, and it's great. Really nice, tells us when we're going to use it, what the target of it is, and the effect it's going to have. It also gives us just three lines to set the scene and give us a little bit of kind of narrative to go along with it. So it tells us the belligerency of the Adeptus Astartes combined with their transhuman physiology makes them unyielding foes to face. We see it's going to cost us one command point and when do we use it? In our opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase just after an enemy unit has selected its targets. The target of the stratagem is one Adeptus Astartes unit from your army that was selected as the target of one or more of the attacking unit's attacks. And then the effect until the end of the phase, each time an attack targets your unit, worsen the armour penetration characteristic of that attack by one. There we go, pretty simple, that's what we're used to, so they haven't changed it too much, just changed how it's structured, how it's organised and how much it's going to cost us. And finally, we've got an enhancement to have a look at, and enhancements will be replacing the relics and warlord traits that we've been using in 9th edition. These are going to give unique upgrades for each detachment, and now there's not going to be any core or universal enhancements. Each one is going to be tied to a specific detachment for a specific faction. The example they're giving us is going to continue with the Adeptus Astartes and the Gladius Task Force, and the enhancement in this case is called Artificer Armour. You'll be giving this to one model only, and the bearer will have a save characteristic of 2+, plus, and the feel no pain 5+, plus ability. There's an interesting line that they put in the article, and it says, These include refined personal war gear like artificer armour or tactical talents that allow a commander to enhance the unit they're leading. That tells us that commanders now, or special characters, are going to be tied in with units, which is cool. That sounds really interesting. And the article at the very bottom says find out next week all about that. So they're not going to tell us any more in the article today, but next week we are going to find out more about exactly what that means. That's pretty cool. We've got loads to look forward to, I think, as the weeks go on and we get closer to the release. And of course, at the end of this month, we're going to get to see the actual contents of the box during Warhammer Fest. 
Hope you've been enjoying all these articles and the videos I'm going through covering all the little updates. I think it's great fun. I like the way they're doing this. We're going to get to see the box at the end of the month, release looking at what, June? So it's not too long to go, but we certainly got a couple of fun months ahead as we see more and more information as the days go by. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you a bit of information about what to expect now from these new rules for the different factions. And I'd love to hear what you think about everything we've seen so far. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, please hit the like button. It'll be awesome if you consider subscribing to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's so cool that you've been supporting the channel right from the beginning and helping me to keep going with these regular videos. And if you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel too. There's a link down below. It'll be awesome to see you there.